you're like me, you probably don't give much thought to bunkering, the supply of marine fuel and lubricants to yachts and ships. But without fuel, they're not going anywhere. Peninsula is a leading independent supplier of marine energy that operates out of some of the busiest ports in the world. The company founder and CEO races on the RC44 circuit, and it has a young team dedicated solely to large yachts, so they fully understand the special requirements of super yachts. And we've come to their supply base here in Gibraltar, gateway to the Mediterranean, to find out how the company is prepping for the transition away from traditional fossil fuels to less carbon intensive alternatives. The merchant fleet is being driven by regulation. Um, especially here in Europe, there are uh, the regulations coming in uh, based on the emissions. So there'll be a payoff between lowering the emissions through the fuel that the vessels are burning and um, having to offset that in, in carbon credits, initially in the immediate future. In yachting, unfortunately, we're being left out of that regulation. Um, but I see a desire from the industry to move forward in the right way. Uh, to make sure that we're doing everything we can to reduce our environmental footprint. Um, and that's aiding the development of the new transitional fuels and the thinking about what the far-reaching future fuels might be. So we're heading out towards uh, Gladiator, which is our floating storage. She's a 72,000 tonne Panamax tanker. Um, on the way out, we'll go past, you'll see the extension jetty, which is where we deliver fuel to the yachts. How many yachts are you refueling in Gibraltar, which are coming in or going out of the Mediterranean? 200 to 300 a year, depending on the season. Obviously, we see a lot of traffic through Gibraltar at the end of the summer when they're heading over to the Caribbean. And then again, this time of year when they're heading, heading back. Um, but, you know, Obviously, we, we see yachts all year round. There are some uh, locally, there are some in the Western Med that will come down. Uh, but yeah, a busy year, we'll see 300 different supplies in a year. Let's not forget that in yachting, we've never seen a transition away from conventional diesel, at least not in the way that we see yachting today. So there's gonna be a, set, a stage where we're transitioning into fuels that the existing fleet of yachts can burn without too much capital investment in the change of the propulsion systems. And then in the far reaching future, we'll have new build vessels coming to, to the fore with new technologies that will potentially use a new range of, of fuels that we're not delivering today. Where do you rank currently? Where does Peninsula rank you know, in terms of uh, marine energy supplies for super yachts? We're definitely top three. Um, it's difficult, no one, no one releases their super yacht specific figures, um, but uh, yeah, we're definitely in the top three suppliers globally, uh, but we want to be that top spot. And on your jetty there, you can receive yachts up to 200 meters, so the biggest super yachts in the world, basically. Yeah, yeah, we've got over 200, about 240 meters worth of quayside, um, split into two berths. So more realistically, unless you've got a ZAM coming alongside, uh, yeah, we can receive three yachts at any one time. And, and we're talking, you know, sort of 50 meters, 350 meter yachts, quite comfortably. While fuel cells and multi-fuel engines may be the future of power on board, what of the thousands of super yachts already in circulation like the one behind me that rely on conventional fossil fuels? Well, one solution is second generation biofuel, which happens to be sustainable, available, and offers a drop-in solution in line with the IMO's mission to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Biofuels are not new. Henry Ford originally designed his famous Model T to run on ethanol. Biodiesel has been available since the 1930s. But today's biofuels have higher energy density and can be used as a straight fossil diesel replacement with no modifications to engines. Now we are getting into the second generation biofuels, which are produced from waste materials, waste biomass, uh, waste by production of food, for example, from sugar cane. So what is remaining of the production of sugar canes? That is used for the production of biofuels. Used cooking oil, uh, another alternative. 
Um, I think the main focus now is uh, the second generation based on uh, waste material and used cooking oil. You heard a lot, most likely, about fame, but also on HVO. Um, both are produced from the same feedstock. So it doesn't matter what kind of feedstock you use, you can produce both biofuels. And the biggest difference between the two, without going into too much technical details, is that an HVO is, has similar properties like a conventional fossil fuel. And that's why an HVO is perfectly capable to be used on board a vessel where fossil fuel is being, being used, either as a drop-in fuel, so that you blend it in 10, 20, 30%, or even use it in 100%, because an HVO can be consumed on board a vessel, unblended, and still gives you a better performance compared to a conventional fossil fuel. The benefits of using a biofuel is that when you look at the full carbon footprint of a fuel, and then we're talking about the well to wake, is that, for example, a biofuel can give you up to 90% of reduction in CO2 emissions, and that is significant. Clearly, quality is of manifest importance to a company like Peninsula. Regardless of the type of fuel, contaminants in regular diesel, for example, can lead to the fuel becoming sticky, which in turn can lead to blocked filters, pumps and injectors. The same is true of biofuels, which have to meet certain quality specifications. This is something that Geron de Vos, head of quality at Peninsula, who also sits on the ISO Technical Committee responsible for marine fuel specification, knows all about. In any, I think, supply chain, you will have the risk of contamination, of, of mixing, etc. So it comes down to the quality procedures on the housekeeping rules a supplier has in its supply chain to avoid these kind of cross-contaminations. Uh, which we have. We have very tight quality controls, for example. But HVO, as a produced fuel, is already of such a high quality um, that from a quality perspective, if you would ask me, um, I would be less concerned with an HVO than I would be with a normal um, marine gas oil used on board yachts. But arguably, the biggest hurdle for biofuel is not a question of quality, availability, or even suitability. It's uptake, and their use by Superyacht so far has been very limited. But this is precisely where Peninsula can make a difference. Because Peninsula is primarily in contact with captains and chief engineers, it's in a unique position to help support and educate the yachting sector to promote a fast but smooth transition to more sustainable fuels. There's quite a lot of misinformation around biofuels and part of our job is to make sure that all of the stakeholders in the industry, from management companies to captains to engineers, are making decisions based on the facts, the truth around the makeup of the biofuels. Biofuels are currently more expensive than conventional diesel. Um, there's, no, there's no getting away from that fact. Um, but it's an emerging market. Um, and, and new products to a market are oftentimes more expensive than existing established products. Um, so I genuinely believe that that's just a matter of time. As production is ramped up and it's increased, there's more availability. Um, the premiums will uh, start to, to, to reduce. You say biofuel is more expensive than uh, marine diesel. How much more expensive? Generally speaking, you're, you're in a range from 20 to 30% premium on conventional gas oil. And at the very, very top end, it can go up to 80, 90% premium on conventional gas oil. It depends on the feedstocks that is being used to produce it, the location that you're taking on and, and the logistics in getting the fuels there, and the current availability and, and, the, and the markets as they stand on any one day. We have done a round table uh, with Fraser Yachts in Monaco, where we invited yacht captains, uh, where I did a presentation on, on biofuels in general, but then also zooming in on, on, on HVO. And after the presentation, a lot of captains came to me and they said, you opened up my eyes on bio, uh, because I was not aware of a product like HVO being available on the market. You can't detract from the fact there aren't very many vessels, aren't very many yachts currently using biofuels. 
But the positive story is that we are seeing a lot more interest and a lot more intrigue into the potential of transitioning to new fuels and in particular biofuels. And I think in all honesty, the future is going to look um, like a, 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 a gradual transition and not this binary, one day conventional diesel, the next day biofuel. As is often the case when it comes to sustainability, the yachting sector tends to lag behind other industries. But there's no real excuse for owners and their captains to delay the transition to biofuels. Yes, certainly they're more expensive, but moving to 10, 20 or even 30% HVO in the fuel tanks is a simple and immediate step on the road towards decarbonisation. And that can only be a good thing for the image of superyachts.